In this video, I'm going to show a simple way of measuring the frequency response of an HF bandpass filter using this MDO3000. The filter we'll be testing is the front end of this Softrock 2 uh, software defined receiver kit that I just finished assembling. Now, the front end of this kit includes a very simple uh, bandpass filter, and uh, we built this uh, to work with the 30 meter uh, HF frequency band which is centered around 10.1 megahertz or so. So probably the most obvious way would be to use a signal generator to generate a sine wave, apply that to the input of the filter, and then change the frequency of the sine wave and observe the output of the filter and how its amplitude varies as you change the frequency. That's largely a manual process, but uh, we're going to do it a little bit differently here. So rather than use a sine wave for my test source here, I'm going to use a noise waveform. And the noise waveform is nice because it's going to have a nice flat noise power over the entire frequency range of interest. In fact, let's uh, instead of looking at it in the time domain here, let's look at it in the frequency domain on the spectrum analyzer. I'll turn the spectrum analyzer on and uh, put our signal in. And uh, let's just adjust, uh, say, the, we'll start at uh, 9 kilohertz, let's stop at, uh, say, 50 megahertz here. Okay, and we can see I've got a nice flat noise power here. So I adjust the reference level down to oh, minus 10 dBm or so. Okay, and now we can kind of see what the uh, that noise signal looks like in the frequency domain. It's basically pretty flat. If I pull that signal back out again, we can see how it drops down. Now with this noise signal, uh, because it is noise, you're going to get these random variations. It's helpful to uh, take a look at that using an, an averaging of the traces to kind of flatten out the random variations. And we get a nice picture of how flat our input signal is that we're going to apply to the filter. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is uh, take the output uh, from the function generator noise source and put it as the RF input to this filter. So now we're applying that uh, to the input of our bandpass filter here and we'll measure the output here. We're going to measure the output uh, using a, a P6150 probe, which is really nothing more than a low capacitance uh, called a Z0 probe designed for 50 ohm applications. We'll connect one end into the spectrum analyzer. On the other end, uh, there are two tips available. One that's a 10x tip that will provide a 500 ohm input impedance, and this is the 1x tip that provides a 50 ohm input impedance. And this filter was designed to be loaded with 50 ohms, so that's the appropriate uh, tip to use. Okay, and to probe the uh, output of the filter, we'll just uh, hold the ground lead against the ground of the probe and touch the probe to the output of the filter. And uh, now we can very quickly in one picture see the shape of that bandpass filter. So with that filter shape on there, we could throw a couple of manual markers on here. And I've got one marker here centered right at 10 megahertz. I can see that's right at the center of uh, the bandpass filter. And I could bring the other marker in here and uh, measure how far down we are on either side of that filter. So if we look, uh, let me put that into a delta mode here. And uh, if we look here, we're about 3 dB down, about uh, 1.8 megahertz above, so at 11.8 megahertz or so, 11.7 megahertz, we're 3 dB down on that side. And we go down to the other side here, and uh, we're about 3 dB down at about 1.8, 1.7, 1.8 megahertz below. Uh, 10 megahertz. So uh, this filter is going to be an adequate uh, bandpass filter for the 30 meter uh, amateur radio band which is uh, again centered around 10.1 megahertz or so. So that's a, uh, a real quick view of how to use a noise source and a spectrum analyzer to very quickly get a picture of the shape of a bandpass filter. Thanks again for watching.